Okay guys, welcome back to Linda's Pantry. And today, first thing on the agenda is a kombucha update. It's Friday and I did kombucha last Friday. I made uh, the black tea and put the um, scoby in there and it just sunk to the bottom and was laying flat. Now it's starting to lift up and you can see a little bit of scobiness around the top here. I don't know if you guys can see that. Right there, there's some scoby residue. <laughs> anyway, I don't know. Um, it's, it, I'm, I'm excited. Now I did change later that day actually, um, because if you don't cover it with a pretty tight woven material, and the, this is a flower sack towel, if you don't cover it with something like that, like um, even if you have two or three layers of the um, uh, cheesecloth, you can get fruit flies and you don't want that. If you did get fruit flies, then what you want to do is take some of your, your, uh, kombucha and cause that's what it's attracted to. Take that and put it into a container and make a funnel with a piece of paper and have a hole at the bottom. They will go down in there and die. They can't get back out. And so, um, anyway, um, I'm super excited. I have uh, kombucha on, on on in the making. I've got gardening. Oh, and I wanted to grab my seeds. We've got to go out and water, and we're gonna do, as you see in the title, we're gonna do some off-grid cooking. And that means we're gonna cook dinner while I'm at work in the sun oven. So I work this afternoon. My first one canceled today, uh, and it was a two and a half hour appointment. So. She canceled, and that gives me time to put dinner together. And I was going to do this tomorrow, but now we can have um, some kind of leftovers or pizza and utilize some of this. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my sun, up, sun oven up here on the table. I'm going to move the plants over there so I can water them. See all my beautiful plants? And I'm going to plant some sweet basil and uh, get that going. And then, let's see, I think... I think that's it. Let me get the tripod set up and uh, you guys can watch what's going on. And it makes it easy. So we're going to go ahead. This only weighs 22, 23 pounds. I think it is 23. Super simple. And we take this camping with us. We take this, uh, if we go on a day outing, let's say we're going to go on a day hike and we don't have to worry about something being on fire or, um, you know, there being coals, hot coals or anything. And you can't burn your food. That's the one nice thing. And it's very, very hard to dry it out. So I'm just going to let it preheat. And all you do is unfold. And this stuff, or this um, sun oven is four years old. Just about four years old. And it's gotten a lot of use. So you set it up. You want to uh, angle it towards the sun. Because I'm going to be using this um, while I'm gone. I'm going to aim it at 2 o'clock sun. We are to get sun all day long. And so once it goes past 2 o'clock, it will still continue to cook just at a lower temperature. So it'll be more of a slow cooker effect than a, um, you know, a hot oven effect, if that makes sense. So I'm going to get to watering some plants while this preheats and get my chicken out and get that ready. And I'll take you in the house and let you see what I do to the chicken. So guys... We are gonna prep our chicken. And I was looking for my pans that came with my solar oven, and they're in my camp gear boxes because we always take the solar oven with us. And so we're still gonna use this um, rectangular casserole dish. Now, I could put the lid on it, but I'm gonna use an oven bag. I'm just gonna give you some different ideas of things you can do in the sun oven. Use it just like you use your conventional oven. While I watered all my plants, that oven is already preheated to 300 degrees. So if you guys are interested in a sun oven, the All-American Sun Oven is the only way to go. I personally owned a Solar Sport and over, I think I had that about four years. And the third year I purchased the All-American Sun Oven. And by the fourth year, the Solar Sport wasn't even useful anymore. Um, the lid and everything, anyways. To make a long story short, this oven, as I told you, is almost four years old. And so 
it's a rock star. So we're gonna do a really delicious roasted chicken and I'm gonna utilize herbs out of my garden. I've got fresh sage, I've got, these are chive flowers. Oh my gosh, so delicious to just eat on their own or in a salad. And when they're at their most purple point is when they're the freshest before they've actually started to dry. And as soon as those quit flowering, I will mow that uh, chive plant down again to nothing and it will come right back up. So you can keep getting your herbs all summer long. Don't let them scare you. Don't let them fool you into believing that they're done. Now my sage is flowering, as you can see, and I'm still gonna, I'm gonna use these too. So I've chopped up some sage leaves. This is going into basically a compound butter. Now this is grass-fed Kerrygold butter, um, and I want some orange flavor with the sage and the chives and salt and pepper and garlic. Now I've got garlic in here, chopped garlic, a lot of chopped garlic, tons of chopped garlic in my melted butter and a ton of black cracked black pepper. Cracked black black pepper. <laughs> so what I've done is I've washed this and this is a six and a half pound uh, chicken. No antibiotics, no hormones, get it as natural as possible. And this chicken will feed us multiple meals. So tonight we'll have a delicious roasted chicken when I get home. And I think that I'll actually have time to um, possibly, I don't know, I was gonna say I might have time to put some potatoes in there. And maybe I'll roast some potatoes along the side here. I haven't decided. Let's get our compound butter together first. So I've zested two oranges, okay? And I want that in my butter as well as my sage that I chopped up. And this is gonna make this pretty thick. And that is quite all right. And really, this is what you have when you get that all done. You're gonna have that kind of mixture. And I wanna get some salt, and because um, we're gonna wanna season this. This is our only chance. It's gonna be locked up in this bag, and so we need some seasoning. Okay, so I decided not to do potatoes. Um, we're gonna use some home canned potatoes and carrots. So that being said, here we go. This is just gonna be fantastic. So what I wanna do is take my chicken and um, go ahead and get my, what I'm gonna put inside the cavity of the chicken right here. Hopefully you can see all this. Um, and I can bring you in close if you'd like, but I think you can see. I'm just gonna take the cavity and stuff that with the orange that I've quartered up. And if I can, I'll use the other two, or the other orange as well. Um, but I don't, I don't know that it's all gonna fit. And I actually, this was such a juicy orange. And then I wanna grab some of these, um, the, of the chive flowers and put them in there. They're gonna perfume this chicken as well. And let's go ahead and grab another piece of the orange. And we'll just use the whole half here on this one. And that will cap that baby off. Woo! And then wrap your skin around the end here. I don't know if you can see that, but wrap, wrap that skin around the end. And um, you, can, you can toothpick that. You can trust this bird. I'm not going to. We're gonna go as easy and rustic as possible. This is something you can do without any special tools, any special cookware. Uh, it really is gonna be simple. And so I'm gonna get up under the skin and you kinda knew this was coming, right? I hope. <laughs> get up under that skin with your hands and I'm using a glove just cause it's, I don't know. I don't, I don't really want my hands all up in there. And then come from the back side here under this part of the skin as well. You're just loosening it up because we're gonna put that butter up under there. Try not to poke any holes in it. And that's gonna perfume it and flavor this chicken. Like, oh, you won't believe how delicious. So good, okay. And if you can, get up, up over these legs too and the thigh meat and everything. Okay, so we've got a nice pocket here to go ahead with our butter. Don't be shy. Go ahead and get that butter 
and garlic and herbs all up under that skin. Oh, I'm so excited. You want tons. My mouth is watering because <laughs> I know how delicious this is. And the orange is just a nice compliment. It brightens it up. And then the rest of this butter and seasoning is all gonna be on the outside of this bird, okay? Get down on the sides of the wings. And if you, if you wanna know what happened to the neck and the insides of this bird, my dogs get to enjoy that um, because you can save it for stock, but every once in a while, a raw chicken neck or wing tip or chicken leg, you know, it's a great treat for your dogs. Um, it doesn't splinter, the bones don't splinter, and it's a natural way for them to get um, calcium and uh, from the bone and the marrow and the minerals that they don't normally get from dog food. I can tell you, they do not get it. So look how pretty it is already. And now we're going to take this bird, I just wanna even her out a little bit. Take her and we're gonna add these flowers and strategically place those so everybody knows that there's little um, bits of these beautiful flowers as well as the sage, okay? I'm gonna put some sage leaves down here and and the purple and the green oh my gosh you guys okay there we go now we are ready to get this in the oven i've got to get this glove off and we're going to pull um i'm going to take a picture of this because it's beautiful just the way it is and maybe i can bring you guys down and show you too because it is gorgeous check that out who doesn't want to put that in their oven mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> okay, so now we're gonna season it up the rest of the way and then we'll get the bag over it. I'll go ahead and take pictures. I'm gonna season with a generous amount of salt. Um, no salt in the butter at all, so you wanna make sure that you get a fair amount, and this is kosher salt. You can use Himalayan pink salt uh, from the Himalayan mountains, or you can use a gray salt, any kind of natural salt is perfect. And there you go. A nice dose of cracked pepper on top as well as inside and in the, um, and, and I did crack, I did uh, pepper the inside of this chicken before I put it in the pan. So it's well seasoned inside and out. It's gonna be perfumed with the herbs and the oranges and <laughs> oh my. Okay, I'm gonna take pictures and I'll take you out there and we'll put it in the oven. Okay guys, so you can see this oven is almost at 350 degrees. It's about 340 right now. And I'm facing this at two o'clock sun, so um, I'm not gonna move it. I'm gonna let it go. And what'll happen is as the afternoon progresses, it will then start cooling down and give it more of a slow cooker effect, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna try to give you an overview of me putting the stuff in there, but I gotta go get some oven mitts because this is hot and can you see the little shadow ring right there that it's just about lined up perfect if the light is right over the bottom hole you are spot on to get full maximum heat if you're off to the side a little bit like mine will end up you will um have a lower temperature but the sun's going to be out all day no rain no wind we're good okay let's get cooking Okay guys, so let's get you a bird's eye view of this oven and what we're dealing with. Okay, so I pulled the, the reflector plates all the way off and back so it gives you easy access. And I'm gonna open this door and it's hot. It's almost 350 degrees. It's hot in here. Okay, so door open, hopefully, there we go. It's not hitting my tripod and you're gonna need something for your hands because you're putting them in a 350 degree oven and it's hot okay so i'm gonna put my leveling rack on here and ouch literally if you to clean this it's to get some vinegar and water and clean it out that's how easy this is okay chicken going in now I did tie and vent the um, the bag uh, just like you would if you were putting this oven bag in your oven at home and I kind of put this one down at a little little bit of an angle to start 
until I get it level. There we go. And like I said, I'm not going to be moving this. If I was moving this around, you kind of have to juggle the pots um, a little bit. But if you guys are interested in one of these ovens, you need to get the link below. I put a link for you where you can receive $70 off the full complete package. It's got the dehydrating package. It's got everything. So you're going to go ahead and uh, there's two little wing nuts here that hold the lid in place and there's a seal a rubber seal there that keeps it perfect and now I'm going to put the shields in place and we'll be cooking and we're going to have dinner oh my gosh fall apart tender delicious and you can save the carcass for a uh, wonderful bone broth and look at well you can't really see but I got I have a brown crust it looks like the the um skin split on the breast but I'm going to take you inside and we're going to see this. It's fall apart tender. It's been out here and I it's still at 350 or 250. Um it was pointed this way and when I got home it was like at 180. So I put it here for the last 15 minutes and it went right back up to 250 as soon as you face it to the sun. So, I'm going to wipe this out when it cools down and um yeah, how easy is that? Dinner's ready, the stove is clean. <laughs> I'm gonna go make some zoodles. Mm. And we have salad already made up, so I'll take this in the house, shut you guys off. Okay guys, so we are ready. And I wanna, I can actually touch the handle, it's pretty good. So I wanna cut this um, oven bag open, and I think these are perfect. If you have, um, like the lid was not gonna seal down, correctly so I just decided for easy cleanup and you know I had this and I didn't have to worry about um, tenting with aluminum foil which I avoid at all costs and I'm not kidding when I tell you this pan is full of juices all the juices from the chicken and the oranges and oh, oh it smells wonderful so I think I'm going to try to remove it from its little home here. Let's get a big spoon and a big fork. Get the orange out of the center here. And, ah, uh, yum. It smells so good. The oranges smell wonderful. Okay, so I'm going to get the spoon up in there. And, oh, wings are falling off, people. Here we go, fall apart. Delicious. A wing that just fell off. And you could make a sauce with what's in here. I mean, it's beautiful. My mouth is watering. Let me see if I can show you um, the juices that are in here. Look at all that. And I didn't add any liquid to this, nothing. So it smells so good, like garlic and oranges and oh my gosh. And now here we've got one of the sage. Pull your herbs off and your flowers. And um, let's see, sage is having a sneeze attack or a backward sneeze, look at this. It's just gonna fall apart. Just like that, fall apart tender. Oh my gosh, you, you guys. I'm super excited. Let's see how moist it is. Because um, our skin did come away from the breast, but I've never had anything get really dry in the sun oven. Um, this was on here longer than I normally would have taken it. But Sage, do you mind? I'm trying to video. So as you, you can see, that's pretty darn juicy. Mm -hmm. And let me let her outside so she can go make noise out there and I'll be right back. Okay, so let's take a bite of this chicken breast and see. Oh my gosh, it is not dry. Not dry at all. I don't know if you can see. Um, but, mm, oh my gosh. Mm. So tender, so tender. Mmm. Unbelievable, and I can taste all of it. 
very subtle on every note, but it is absolutely delicious. And if you wanted to, you could, um, if you lay your chicken breast out on the plate, you can go ahead with some of this and um, let that sink in and, and become lovely. Let's just try that. <laughs> Let's see what that tastes like. Mm, so good. Mmm. Okay, now I get a lot of butter. I mean, I get that butter flavor. So delicious. And your skin, um, it's not crispy, crispy, but pretty crispy. Let's see. I mean, like it would be in an oven bag. Exactly the same as in your oven. So let's go ahead and taste the dark meat here. And I'm, I'm going to go big and take skin at the same time. I want to see. Mm. Unbelievable. So good. So now all I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and part this all out and get it ready for dinner. I'll put it on a plate and cover it and um, when Michael gets home oh, I can heat it back up if he's too late. But uh, oh, I can't stay out of it. I love the orange orange and garlic mm. <clears throat> so good okay mm. okay <laughs> I'm gonna get this all on a plate and then I'll do my veggies and uh, there's how you do a chicken how easy is that we've got chicken from the Sun oven fall apart tender didn't use a lick of energy to do it and um, you know once again I get a great meal out of the oven for free. I didn't have to worry about a crock pot going, heating up my house. I didn't have to worry about electricity going or the oven or anything. I was totally confident that it was going to be just fine out on the patio table and it was. All right guys. So don't forget there's a link down below. You can save $70 and you get all the accessories that go with it. Um, or if you just want to be oven by itself and use your own pans and your own, you know, do your own thing, then it's $50 off. Um, so there's a promo code down there. As long as you click on that, it'll take you right to it and it'll give you the discount. And um, you'll have an oven to use for many, many years. And uh, you'll get excited about cooking out there because you get really creative. Tomorrow, we're doing dessert. So I gotta get that cleaned up, see if there's anything to clean up, and uh, get it ready for tomorrow because the grandbabies are gonna be here and I bet they want brownies. And somebody requested brownies when I posted a picture of my son oven when I pulled it out. So um, I'll be doing brownies. All right, guys. I can't wait to see you next time for another delicious recipe. And even though now I've picked it all apart, I'll try to make it look pretty on a plate and get a picture. But you guys get the picture. It's delicious. <laughs> Don't forget, there's other links down there. And my Facebook page and my mailing address and all those good things. Mwah. See you tomorrow. My pantry peeps. Okay, so here's the chicken before I put it in the oven, and it absolutely is beautiful. And now, after it's off the bone, fall apart tender, delicious, full of flavor, and here's dinner with zoodles, a salad, and that roasted.